Hello again, Mark Smith, community manager here at Kubi Casa, and I'm excited to share with you best practices on scanning homes. So we're gonna um, really jump in and we're gonna walk through a, an entire scan, but before we get to the actual scan, I wanted to spend some time to talk about some of the things before you actually get into scan. So some of the pre-scan uh, techniques and things that you should do. And one of the very first things is please make sure that you charge your device. Um, it's super important um, to have at least 50% battery power um, one of the other things that's super important is to make sure that you plan your path when you're about to scan. So make sure that you walk through the house, make sure that doors are open, that lights are turned on, that you know how you're gonna walk, where you're gonna walk, so that there are no surprises when you get in. The worst thing that you can have happen is you get into a scan and you're moving and you forget a room or you don't realize that something is there or you, you know, you're unfamiliar. So just take a few minutes right before you scan Walk through the house, make sure that everything is good so that you know exactly where you're going. Um, the other thing is, if you're scanning a large home or if you're um, in a place where you're not sure if you'll make it through an entire scan, you may wanna go into safety mode. And you go into settings and you can turn that on. That will just keep anything from interrupting your scan and, and allow you to, to move through it pretty seamlessly. So. Again, as I mentioned, make sure you turn on all the lights, make sure you open all the doors. Um, we'll get to this when you actually start scanning, but the reason that's so important is you don't want a door to swing open in the, the view of your scan because that can affect uh, the geographical pieces within the scan so that it throws everything off. So make sure that you open those doors that you're already ready. And if you have to open a door while you're in the midst of a scan, you simply make sure that you turn the camera away from the door that you're opening so that it's not in the picture or the video when you open the door. Um, one of the other things is if you have any external lenses or anything like that on your phone, make sure you remove those. They can impede the video, so make sure you remove any additional lenses, anything, any attachment that could impede or you know could block the view of the camera that you have on your phone. All right, so just a few more tips. Um, we wanna make sure that um, when you start to scan, that you're scanning at chest height, uh, you'll be angling the camera down slightly because you wanna get the seam where the floor and the wall meets and a little bit of each. Uh, you don't want too much wall, too much floor. So we'll show you what that looks like as we get in. In addition, um, you will wanna get the bottom of windows and things like that so that we can you know, act accurately draw the floor plan and give you the details that are needed. Um, it's super important to avoid rapid movement. Um, you don't want to have any sudden turns, which is again why it's so important to plan out your path so that you know how you're going. And we'll walk through some special tips on how to maneuver in small and tight spaces, which can be uh, sometimes pretty challenging. Um, the other thing is you want to try to be at least six feet away from your walls as you're moving through the home. Um, that just helps. But again, we know that there are some tight spaces. So sometimes what you'll have to do is walk in and then back out. But you know, the ideal thing is we wanna be able to capture as much of every room as possible so that especially phones uh, equipped with LiDAR are able to pick up the depth and pick up the information so that we can create the most accurate floor plan given the dimensions and everything as you would like them to be. So again, make sure that you're not walking sideways, make sure that you're approximately six feet from walls when possible, no rapid movements, and we really don't need ceilings um, and we don't need the full window or anything like that. So you wanna show the bottom of windows, you do wanna show fixtures, and we'll walk through that in the video so that you can see exactly what it is as we walk. So you know what? I think we're ready. Let's jump in and see what this video looks like as we actually start to scan a home. So we're ready to scan. You can enter the street name of the property and don't worry, you can go back and change that later. Um, once you do that, you can turn your device to landscape mode and get started. Get in, you'll see we're gonna walk, showing the bottom of the window as we discussed. We're gonna turn and get as much of, again, the bottom of the wall and then where it meets the floor, not showing too much wall. As we walk down the hallway, we're gonna walk forward again, concentrating on the area three to eight feet in front of us.
In this dining room area, there's not enough room to really make it by the uh, dining room table. So we'll just walk in and back out and then move around to the other side of the table. Again, you'll notice we're getting the bottom of the window each time and in each room. Again, the goal is to keep a normal walking pace. Showing the bottom of the door there. And you'll see a recurring theme as we go through. We're gonna show the bottom of windows in every room that we go in. You don't have to show more than the bottom just so that we can see what's there. In some houses, you know, spaces get really tight. So you wanna walk through as you know, efficiently as possible while showing as much data, um, but without getting too close to walls. Now here, because we're in the kitchen, we are gonna pan up to show the cabinets and the fixtures within the room itself. And we'll keep scanning. Here we have a small bathroom. So we're not gonna walk in and try to turn. We'll simply walk in and show as much as possible and then pull back out. Now here's an example of what we talked about. We want to go through that door, but instead of showing the door opening, we turn the camera away, open the door, and now we can walk through. Many times garages are full of uh, clutter and things. So you're still able to scan. Um, again, you want to just follow the same practices, get as much as you can, um, show that combination of the floor and the wall, show any doors, and you're good to go. Now that we've completed one floor, it's time to head upstairs. Again, you want to show the entirety of the stairs. And then be careful as you're walking upstairs. Safety is important, so safety first. You see I'm still holding the camera chest height and angling down. In the case of stairs, you wanna angle up a little bit so that you're able to um, keep your vision and make sure you're um, going in the appropriate space. Again, this is a pretty wide hall, but as you notice, we're just focusing on the center of the hall and it's picking up both sides. As we walk in, again, we grab the bottom of each of those windows. Showing as much as possible, but staying um, and trying to keep that three foot distance from furniture and things like that. Again, here we're gonna demonstrate a feature. We wanna name this room, so you click the button and simply say the name of the room, and then click the name of the room. And again, this only applies if it is a different type of room and not a normal or standard room. Again, here we're gonna walk in, and instead of doing a, a big flip or turn, we're just gonna walk in and then back back out walk to the other side and do the same thing. Same concept for the bathroom. We'll walk in and show as much as we can. And instead of doing a big turn, we'll simply back back out.
many of the homes that we um, scan are going to have tight spaces so it's important to use the same concept again we're going to walk in we'll get this walk-in closet again not fully walking in but walk in enough to capture what's there and then simply pull back out and we'll back back in the same space we came and then migrate to the other side of the bed and do the exact same thing. Avoiding big turns, quick turns, but still capturing what's needed to get an accurate and effective scan. Many bathrooms are extremely small. This one is pretty narrow. So again, same concept. We walk in, we scan, and we back out. You'll notice that we're walking at a pretty steady pace. When you have walk-in closets, it's cool to get the detail, make sure that you're able to show as much as possible. Again, backing out, and then making sure that we get as much of the room as possible. Maintaining that three to eight foot distance Again, you'll see the same recurring theme. Get the bottom of the window. We'll back out to the other side. Again, still capturing the detail of the room. And repeat there. This walk-in closet was big enough to walk all the way in and adequately turn around without any quick turns. We'll use the same concept in the toilet area to make sure we show it, but just back right back out. Lastly, as we enter the laundry room, we don't want to show too much of the washer and dryer, so we'll go in and up to show as much of the wall as possible and the floor, and then simply back back out. And just like that, we are done with the scan. Now the fun part begins. Once you complete the order, you can go back in and you can um, change the address information. If you initially have the street and the number show up in the same place, you simply just move the street portion down or the number portion down into the number section. You select your account hit send and watch your order upload. And just like that, you're done.